meetings with our ministers and had the opportunity to also uh, see the different parts of the island of, of Nafuti and uh, we're very happy to uh, have a press conference this morning and give an opportunity to the to the media if you have any questions you'd like to, to ask uh, myself or the, the honorable minister but uh, from our side we're very happy to, to have you here thank minister you. and welcome thank you very much um, minister Kofek if I may just make a few remarks the first uh, I want to thank uh, Minister Kofi and the government of Tuvalu for the, uh, the warmth of their welcome, uh, for the wonderful celebration last night. Uh, uh, I want to thank the minister personally who hosted me for so generously for hit the dinner, but also for uh, hosting me at his house for breakfast this morning. Uh, I really have deeply personally appreciated the warmth of uh, your engagement uh, and uh, the, the way in which we've been able to have, uh, I think, important conversations. Um, I want to just make two points. The first is uh, about family, and I spoke, I've spoken about that a lot, a lot around the Pacific in this last year. Uh, Australians, our government wants to be a better, more engaged, more helpful member of the Pacific family. And we recognise that families, uh, as I said last night, they're about love and care, but they're also about uh, duty and loyalty uh, and uh, we we see in this time of uh, so many challenges strategic competition climate change uh, as well as covid the importance of the pacific family we've seen it over the last few years and we see that uh, as, as central to how we envisage the region in which we live and the ocean we share but i want to particularly focus on climate um, particularly given where we are this um, the northernmost tip of Tuvalu and the location of uh, Minister Kofi's um, uh, very famous um, uh, speech or uh, message to the world. <coughs> uh, and it's fitting that we should be standing beside you because that's how we I want to think about it and how Australia thinks about it. We are beside you in this uh, and it is, uh, it is an existential challenge. Uh, it is um, the peoples of the Pacific peoples of Tuvalu are confronting a crisis not of their making, confronting a crisis, uh, a challenge to their existence, to their culture, to their art, to their sovereignty that they have not chosen. Uh, and we see as Australians, uh, our, it is our responsibility to stand beside you uh, in your fight uh, to preserve your identity, your sovereignty, uh, and your call to action to the world, to all countries of the world, to, to do more when it comes to the fight against climate change. Um, we know that no not, climate change cannot be confronted unless all countries take action. All countries. Uh, and I hope uh, that the work that we can do together with our different voices and our different perspectives uh, will add weight to the call for more action, uh, which of course uh, is most exemplified by our desire to host a Conference of the Parties, co-host with the Pacific a Conference of the Parties uh, uh, in the future. Happy to take questions. <coughs> Um, uh, a closer partnership. A uh, closer partnership on climate change, on uh, the economic aspirations of Tuvalu, uh, and to work together in the region. Um, uh, that's what I seek, we seek. Uh, this is 
uh, we were elected just less than a year ago and I made a commitment uh, to myself uh, that um, I wanted to try and visit every member of the Pacific Island Forum in my first year as Foreign Minister. Uh, and I wanted to listen, to engage, to uh, engage with respect uh, and, and humility. Uh, and the reason I wanted to do the, all of the uh, visits to and with, engage with all members of the Pacific Island Forum in the first year was uh, because we are a member of the Forum, because we share an ocean, we share a region, we share a future. But it also was a statement of our priorities as a new government. And our priority is here. Our priority is uh, the region in which we live. Uh, so the Pacific and also Southeast Asia, I wanted to be very clear, this is, these are our priorities and we are going to demonstrate that uh, by engaging, by listening and by being there. Well, I think that's really a, a question of priorities for the people and the government of Tuvalu. Now, we want to be guided by Pacific priorities and we want to be guided by your priorities. So I don't see, we, we don't come here to, um, we come here to listen to your priorities and to have the discussion about how we can work best together. Uh, and obviously climate is, is, and climate resilience is important. Um, uh, but as you know, Australia has traditionally uh, focused on um, health and education uh, as well as infrastructure. Yes. Uh, look, uh, I want to make a point about not only the engagement piece, visa, but also labour movement, and it's a point I made at the Pacific Islands Forum. We want those. Uh, arrangements, those schemes to work for the sender countries as well as for Australia. So we want to have a dialogue with uh, the countries of the region who want to participate or who are participating about how we make sure they work well together. Uh, on the, on, on the, the visa that you describe, uh, that will require legislation to get through the parliament. Uh, so we're engaging with the parliament about uh, making sure we can we can work through that. Uh, and But we will uh, work with Tuvalu and other countries of the region about how the scheme would operate and when it would commence. What is your plan after visiting the uh, yes, we Australia is um, a contributor to that and uh, has put uh, additional funds uh, <coughs> bilaterally as well as being obviously part of the green, pre historically being part of the Green Climate Fund. But my observation about it is this, uh, you know, this is one of the ways in which we can try and work together uh, to manage uh, the real and present risks that climate change prevents. Uh, it's quite an impressive project and um, I was you know, really pleased to go there with uh, Mr. Minister Seve and to see uh, the way in which we've collaboratively worked uh, to, to try and reclaim that land. Okay. To me? <laughs> He's very eloquent, you should ask him a question. <laughs> yes. Yes, I mean. It is the number one threat. Okay? <laughs> we have it if you need it. <laughs> um, oh, look. It is the, the, the reality of and the enormity of what climate change means to uh, the peoples of the Pacific and particularly those in, who live in atoll uh, countries. Um, was something I'm aware of, but you can't, you are, I, 
of course I, I'm, I'm more moved to speak with you in person about it. So, uh, and I was thinking last night as I was part of the, the dance and the um, singing, what it is for people to, who are obviously so proud of who they are in their culture, how it is to feel that this is happening to their country with um, so and how hard it is that they cannot stop that happening uh, so it made me I suppose even more focused on the importance of working together um, on some of the projects that and the strategies that Minister Coffey is, is seeking to do to protect your sovereignty and to preserve your sovereignty going forward but uh, I think the next thing we, we really need to work on together, uh, apart from all the things we do, is to make sure the conference of the parties that the COP31 yields even more ambitious outcomes. Okay. We come as friends and we come as family and we want to work with you. Right. Well, uh, you didn't get a question. <laughs> How was I? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll briefly respond yeah, to, to some of the issues that you've uh, you yeah, touched yeah. on. But um, um, let, let me just say that um, we, we came into office at the end of 2019, just before the COVID-19 uh, outbreak. So our borders have been closed for the last three years mm. and uh, finally opened in December of last year. And so uh, this visit is, uh, is a significant one. And... Um, it is the first foreign minister that we've received uh, during our term. So with, uh, I think it speaks volumes to the effort and the commitment from Australia to, to building our relationship and deepening our, our cooperation. So just wanted to commend you, Honourable Minister, for, for that. I know you, you hit the road running uh, when you came into office, uh, was it last year? Uh, and, and, and so we appreciate the, the effort to come out to, uh, to Tuvalu. And um, as I said last night, it is my hope that uh, your visit will help uh, deepen our diplomatic uh, relationship. Um, in the Pacific, we like to do face-to-face um, -face meetings. Mm. You know, we've, we've had uh, COVID-19 for the past three years and everything was online. But I think having that face-to-face -face meeting um, is just different dynamics mm. and, and, and mm. it really helps us to um, to get a feel of the, the, the issues of, of our, our partners and, and, and find ways to, uh, to, to move forward. Um, so really appreciate uh, your, your visit. And um, as I said last night, the, you know, our, our foreign policy uh, focuses very much on, on um, the, the global well-being and, and focusing on the responsibilities of, of nations to achieving that well-being. And, and our policy is obviously developed from our uh, the, the values that are enshrined in, in the Tuvalu constitution. And as I mentioned also last night, uh, Tuvalu is, is, is a community-based society. Uh, we value the well-being of the community and we emphasize the responsibilities of, of, of individuals. And so we've, we've tried to, to bring that into, the, into, the, into, into our foreign service and, 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 and try to, to be consistent in our actions and in our outreach to, to, um, to, to, to global leaders. And, uh, and I think we're living in a time where we, we need to, to really promote uh, these values, uh, the interconnectedness of, of the world, uh, the vulnerabilities of, of, of countries to each other's actions, uh, really requires us to, to look at the, at the bigger bigger picture. And, and I know it's, it's natural for, for leaders and for countries to pursue their own uh, national interests. That, that's uh, very natural because we are, we are humans and we're driven by that. Um, but I think Tuvalu has a um, an important role to uh, to to speak and to um, try to draw the attention to, to to the to the bigger picture. And, and climate change, I think it's it's a, a perfect example of, of, of an issue that that requires everyone uh, on board. And I, um, I I shared briefly last night about the importance of building bridges. I, I understand that there's political uh, geopolitical tensions in, in the region. Uh, and obviously Tuvalu is not here to point fingers at anyone. Uh, we think that if, if peace is the objective for, for everyone, then we should be looking at what is our responsibility to achieving uh, peace. Um, and so that's, that's a message from uh, Tuvalu. 
as I also uh, said, um, this Sunday will mark 80 years uh, since the, the bombing of this island that we, we are on. And uh, not far from here there is a, a concrete block uh, that used to hold a, a gun. Um, um, and then, I mean, it's just a, a reminder of uh, the devastations of, of, of war. And um, Tuvalu wants nothing less than, than peace for, and stability for, for the region. And I know Australia is, we, we look up to Australia as, as, as a bigger brother, as a bigger sister. Um, and we, we're certainly happy to, to work with, with yourself to, uh, to, to bring that to our part of the world. So you had, you had a question? What? Might need to go in. <laughs> right. No, no, she works for me. She better not ask him a question. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so good. <laughs> well, uh, I, I think this 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 uh, this visit was to really have the opportunity to have a face to face meeting with uh, the Honourable Minister uh, Penny Wong. But also an opportunity for her to see firsthand um, uh, Tuvalu and the, the vulnerabilities of our islands, um, and what is really at stake for, for for Tuvalu when we're talking about issues on, on climate change. Uh, I know that your, the Albanese government have taken uh, positive steps in, in the right directions to to address that. But I also recognise um, that that there are also challenges internally that you, you need to deal with. And, and looking at how you can transition your, your, your economy. Uh, we, we fully understand that. And, and I think the approach that Australia has taken uh, has been a very diplomatic one. It's been one of respect and humility. And, and I wanted to, uh, to commend uh, yourself for that, Minister. Uh, so, so in short, it's, it's basically just to, to touch base and uh, have this, this, this opportunity, which we did not have in the, in the last three years. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. This is uh, one of the best locations I've ever <laughs> conflicts. Thank you. Just give that to Ash, thank you.